Hello and welcome to the Lawrence Plays channel for part two of this week's Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 update video. And we we're last week we were touching on how we're bringing in all of the resources from the other planets and how that seems to be going reasonably well. But one of the notable things is that from all of the other planets we're getting quite a lot of um, junk coming through as well that needs to be disposed of. And so that's being fed into that's being fed into the warehouse up here, and the trains come over, and we'll grab it, take it away, and deal with it. So that's all basically okay. But the problem was there was only one additional train that was doing the run round to grab this and take it away. And so that turned out when we when we ended up with how many ships have got one, two, three, four, five, six, six different ships coming in, bringing resort important resources, yes, but also large quantities of junk along with them. That one additional train wasn't remotely enough, and so Tristan has added in an extra two emergency trains, as they're, as they're known as. Um, there's one of them over here, but it's setting off now. I'm not sure why the other one is still is stationary, because we should pretty much have a steady stream of them coming into this station over here, because this warehouse is completely full, unless he's messed with the uh, systems a bit more than that. But yeah, this this warehouse is completely full, so we should have a steady stream of these trains coming along in here to pick up the. Um, Pick up all, all of the, uh, the 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 the, the byproducts and take take them away. But no, it seems we've gone over here. Maybe it's maybe what the stuff that's been fed in here is significantly less dense. I notice there's an enormous quantity of stone in here. So it's all all filling up. To, it's all only stacking up to 50. So if we look up here, there is um. Uh, input everything is being outputted output as an I. And if I is more than 20,000, right? Okay, so. The problem is that we're looking for 20,000 stuff in total. But oh, actually, no, there is more than 20,000 here. And this station is, is is turned on. And yeah, okay, so I don't know why we're not dispatching more of the uh, the emergency trains over then. So that seems to be a little bit of a problem. Um, that This train should be on its way over to, uh, to go to an emergency downstream. But it isn't. Um... Yeah, so Agnea has rather a lot of stuff. The, now, to be fair, there is enough vulcanite here, so it's not actually a problem. Uh, there is enough, plenty going. Oh, no, wait, there is no, there isn't. The, the vulcanite is not being fed through here because this is completely filled up with junk. So we are successfully unloading the spaceship into these warehouses, but eventually these warehouses will fill up if we bring enough loads out. Yeah, this one, see, this one's full. In fact, this one, no, the whole thing, the whole thing is broken because we aren't getting any trains coming here. So maybe I need, do I need to drop this down to, um, uh, 10,000? Will that help? I don't think it will, because I think that was already triggering. Um, no, that hasn't pulled another train out. So I noticed that this one seems to only be going when D is greater than 2, and D seems to be disposal. So it's when there's two of these stations require a, re require pickup, then it'll send out a train, but not when only one does. Maybe other emergency trains would, are supposed to be taking it away from here as well. I, I, don't, I don't know, but the system doesn't seem to be working, because Agnea has um, blocked on, on, on rubbish here. Now, there is 28,000 in, um, in, in, in the station here, so that's not too bad, but it's notable that that is only just... Um, that's only, that's less than a train and a half so it would be nice to have that working a bit more uh, a bit more reliably similarly over here mark has been working with the uh, with the belts here so we've got he, he sorted out the um the vulcanite belt here and the cryonite belt apparently so to make sure there's a nice steady flow of it going to all of these stations as long as the supply keeps up anyway so it's been brought in here it's going into this um into this strong box and can then be passed off into this ship or this one over here or in the end anywhere else that requires it so that's uh, that's working nice it's a little bit more organized than it was before with the uh, with these strong boxes here holding holding a little bit of buffer <laughs> and we also found to our um, d uh, dismay the the ship that flew out to Njord hadn't fueled up completely before it left and I'm not quite sure why it was able to leave without without a full tank of fuel because I thought this in combinator over here was supposed to be watching to make sure it was full maybe it got to 36 I, I don't know but anyway the ship got out to Njord and then didn't have enough fuel to take off again so well from didn't have enough fuel to take off from Njord orbit again so it was just sat there and a rescue mission was required so in order to make sure that doesn't happen again Tristan has put in some additional um uh, bring has put in additional demands on the rare metals because that was the short shortage we'd had. Um, presumably, we got to the point where we didn't need an entire train load of stuff, so the train was sitting down on the um, down on the planet, and we'd run out of rare metals, and it still and we weren't requesting enough. So that's been increased. We're now presumably requesting um, more than a train's worth of, of rare metals alone. So ten thousand sounds like sounds like it probably is. And I believe yes, he's putting some beacons along here as well to speed up some of these machines, so we can make the uh, make the ion stream a bit more quickly and and, and into them and uh, have have it, have it available to keep all the trains fully fully fueled. 
hmm, there's 55,000 here in each of these uh, tanks, which is enough to fill up one of these um, uh, one of these trains, admittedly, nearly twice over. But these aren't running. Uh, oh, because there's a shortage of um, of, of plasma stream on this one on this now, uh, and there's a shortage of plasma stream because there's a shortage of chemical gel. Oh dear. And the chemical gel is being made over on the other side. This, this is something we haven't fiddled with for ages because it's always, it so far has always been okay. But at the moment, yeah, we just don't have any chem enough chemical gel available to fill up a train. Um, is that because of a resource shortage or because of a throughput shortage? So there's a shortage of, um, of petroleum gas and that's supposed to come up. How are, we making, how are we getting petroleum gas up here these days? So there's a pipe hit to pipe to nowhere here. Yes, we're making it out of the heavy oil that comes out of the uh, the scrap processing up here, but it looks like we're not actually dealing with enough scrap at the moment to keep the heavy oil flowing, and therefore we've run out down here and everything is broken and we've run out of petroleum gas. So that's going to be something we're definitely going to need to fix very, very urgently in the next stream. Um, I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that. Oh, hang on, wait a minute. No, there's supposed to be... Yeah, there's supposed to be trains over here somewhere in the... Um in the system. Yes, here we go. The bring up the petroleum gas. So that implies to me that we don't have a petroleum gas drop-off station and that is the problem. Yeah, so we need to put in a petroleum gas drop-off station in here, then pump that down and put it into the system down here so we can carry on making chemical gel and then everything will be all, everything will be well again. So, yeah, it's a the uh, the upgrade the, the switch over was only partially done. So we need to yeah, we need to get that implemented and start and, and start that running. Notably, we seem to we've run out of um We've, we're running low on uh, on cables here, but that's actually a good thing. We shouldn't be requesting these anymore. Get rid of that um, because they're being fed in from ground level with the cheap ones I discussed last week. So we don't we don't want that to be requesting any more uh, any more space elevator cable, and it's absolutely fine that there's a shortage of it. So we can get rid of that as well. While I'm thinking of trains, and I sort of am because I'm playing Factorio, and I always think about trains when I'm playing Factorio. <laughs> uh, Tristan has also finished off the uh, finished off sort of looping the rails round. So before we we noticed that there were a lot of the trains were taking ridiculously long loops, particularly the Vulcanite train that, go, that was going from here to up here was having to come all the way through this area around here. And this area tends to get very, very congested because it seems like almost all of the trains travel through, uh, travel through this area because it was a massive bottleneck beforehand. Now we've got this train, this piece of rail coming all the way up through the middle here um, and this means that the trains can now come around this side as well if they want to and that should make things a lot better it should make it a lot easier for the trains to flow around the uh, around the factory um, without them all having to pass through one single area over here so that should make a big difference um, and presumably that's just been done yeah it's been done through roboports clearly so we've uh, we built it built, built this nice bridge across here with landfill and, and roboports all the way through to keep everything uh, everything running and yep that's all linked through very nicely so that's going to help that's going to help quite a lot with the um with, with the throughput there and I think the last thing I have to talk about that we've done this in, in the last stream was over here where Mike has put in an additional drop-off station here. And this is, this is I believe, for the heavy bearings. So they're getting dropped off here, passed down this belt, and then they're getting poured in here in ma en masse because... Previously, we were make, we were bringing in iridium by delivery cannon to here, and as I said, we want to move away from delivery cannons, and then we're turning it into iridium plates, beams, and heavy bearings over here, and we want to stop doing it like this, partly because this is far too slow for what it turns out we needed, and also because there's no productivity modules in here, so it's inefficient. Now, yes, we could put the productivity modules in, but um, we haven't needed to, but I think we would like to demolish this as soon as, we, as, soon as realistically possible. Um, However, it looks like we're also bringing in the um, Immocyte Crystals there as well. So we can get rid of the request for Iridium, we can get rid of the re request for Vulcanite, get rid of the, both of those. Then we can also get rid of all of this and that and, and that. In fact, all of that. All the way up here. We don't need that feed in, in there anymore, so we can get rid of all of this. And probably that as well. So, because the, the reason we have, we, the reason we need these heavy bearings up here is because we're they're, they're required in order to make the, um, the, the 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 tier three assembly machines. They're also required for the high end um, inserters, and they're required for all of the uh, the purple belts and a lot of the well, a lot of the more com complicated bits of purple belts. Oh no, no, they are actually needed for purple, straight up for purple belts as well. Um, and so. Yeah, we need to start bringing these over in large quantities, but this requires the iridium to be coming over in large quantities as well. But this is an important step in that direction. Now, I have noticed that for some reason there seems to be some uh, solid rocket fuel on the belt down here. I don't know where that's come from, but it uh, shouldn't be there. So let's um, delete that. Bots can take it all away. Uh, and then we can we can feed these bearings through and we can start making these assembly machines again. But in the meantime, well, let's just, let's just do a little bit of tidying up if we have any bots around to take to deal with it. 
we apparently don't because they're all too busy dealing with clearing up all of this. But anyway, that needs to be that needs to be fixed. And then finally, unfortunately, after about three and a half hours, the stream ended with technical difficulties because the computer I, I've switched over to using one computer to play the game on, and then a capture card that feeds the video data into another computer that then handles the stream, which is why we've been able to run the game at about 45, 50 UPS recently instead of the sort of 35 we're getting, 30 to 35 we're getting before. So it's been a big improvement, but unfortunately, it turns out the other computer wasn't was was just soaking heat and eventually. I think it was a heat problem, it eventually fell over, so that was a little bit unfortunate. Um, but it meant the stream ended a little sooner than we intended, which is perhaps why we've not done quite as much stuff as we might otherwise have done. Although that said, it, it happened. At, it was almost 11 o'clock when it happened, so hopefully we wouldn't have carried on playing for much longer. So I think the next thing to think about is what I'm going to do next time. I did talk a little bit about how I wanted to expand the uh, Vulcanite production over on um, Agnea even further and switch over to using the um, a, a better system to to, to, to deal with the um, the core chunks a bit more a bit more quickly and to make sure they're the priority. But then if we look in here, I start to wonder if there's actually any point because if you look at the numbers that we're uh, consuming and producing and consuming, you can see that over the last let's look over the last hour we've made 224 225,000 vulcanite and it's been relatively steady yes they've been ups and downs but it's been pretty steady whereas the we've used up uh, 55,000 so we've produced more than we've produced just over four times the amount we've used and that's despite these wild spikes in here which i imagine is probably making pyroflux but i'm not sure uh, yeah, we've had some. We've had a couple of wild spikes, but overall, the general general consumption is at about 500, and the overall over the last hour has been at about 930 uh, per minute. So, as you can see, we're producing it much much faster than we actually need it. So, I'm tempted to say. Nah, I don't care. Vulcanite is good enough. We'll just leave it unless something breaks and go off and worry about something else. And I think the next thing I want to worry about is getting Astro Science 4 up and running. So at the moment we've got we've got Astro 1 to 3 ticking over quite nicely. We're making all the catalogs over here. And so let's have a quick look at the Astro 4 because I haven't really looked at it yet and I'm sort of curious as to what's going to be required. So we've got the asteroid pro belt probe data. Now I believe Tristan has set up a, a probe construction system over here, but we don't have the spaceships for it yet. So partial success, uh, partial credit. It's been we, we've got to the point where we have um, have the probes being made and the probe la rocket launchers being made, but we still need to go out, make the outpost to launch them, and also make the spaceships to take to do the the back and forth trips to w with those. So that's something that's going to be something I'll need to do, and, th and that'll be quite interesting. The zero point energy data requires negative pressure data, and I believe was that one I needed for the previous. Yes, that's this one here. So we can we need to tap off this this um, this this data card, bring it down, and start turning that one into uh, zero point energy data. And it's got a standard loop back and so some thermal fluid in there. Nothing too nothing too elaborate required in there. Uh, blimey, let's not look let's not look at that spoilers. <laughs> uh, then we've got micro black hole data, which is just particle stream. That's that's going to be easy. We can just bring that in by train. Um, dark energy data is astrometric data and negative pressure data, both of which we have around here in reasonable quantities. Here's the here's the astrometric data. Here's the here's the negative pressure data. So yeah, we can split those off, and I think that's going to be okay. That should give us everything we that should give us everything we need. This is looking like it's not going to be that difficult a, uh, a science pack to do. The hardest part is going to be getting all the infrastructure up and ready for the asteroid belt probe data. Um, but once that's up and running, then we should be fine. And then with that, we can start doing the advanced recipes for making the insights. We can do, and then we can, most, more interestingly, we can start making the Astro Science Pack 4. And that's going to mean, and this is a thing I was talking about quite a lot a long time ago, back when I was actually doing the sciences, we need to then come out, finally come over here and adapt this train to bring up all the different beryllium things. So the ingots, the poles, the, the um, aeroframe scaffolds, and the uh, aeroframe bulkheads. And we can put them all into here and then feed them out to all the sciencey machines across here. And that will allow me to then to remove all of this infrastructure up here, and that's another of the things that's using delivery cannons. Now this is going to mean a double handling on the on the beryllium ingots. My plan is basically to send them down to Norvis and then bring them back up again in this uh, in this sushi train because I want because I want this train to carry all four of the things that we're we're, we're using up here. Um, which is it's a little bit messy t taking stuff down just to bring it back up again. But the alternative is to bring an entire train of beryllium over here and unload it, squeeze it in somewhere around here, probably over here, I guess, given where the space. Um, and that just I don't know that that feels sort of worse somehow. Uh, I can't really put my finger on exactly why it feels worse, but it does. 
For all the other things, I want to definitely be making them down on Norvis for the uh, for the uh, productivity boost that we're mentioning because it's it, it, we're going to be looking at it's, it's a 32% productivity boost on the and the aeroframe scaffolds as we discussed, and it's uh, no on the no it's not it's a 32% productivity boost on the uh, on the poles. It's then going to be another 32% boost on top of that for the aeroframe scaffolds, which comes out to, which comes out to about a 75% boost overall, and then another another 32% boost on the uh, on the beryllium um, on, on the aeroframe bulkheads, bringing us up to 2.3 levels of effect production on the uh, per, for the amount of beryllium we're putting in. So that'll save us quite a lot of beryllium. And since we're not actually producing beryllium all that quickly, I think that's a very valuable thing to have. So I'm, I'm I think that's very very worth having. We're definitely going to be making all this stuff down on the planet rather than as my original plan was in having having four assembly machines across here because the product productivity gains are so so worth it after that well who knows um mark is going to continue working on the biological sciences i think he's i think he's making sort of vague starts on three he hasn't actually put any of the machines in up here yet but but with the bringing in of those of those um dark green bottles that we talked about yesterday um these these ones down here are definitely going to be an important step in making in making biological three and then once the bio three is up and running at a nice and uh, nicely we can start making bio four at that point we might start thinking about putting better classes of productivity modules into everything because maybe by that point they'll feel affordable we'll have all of the um, all the back end systems working nicely we'll have a good supply of all the different resources and then just tapping off random stuff in order to make better modules isn't going to feel quite as horrible so the productivity four modules for example require a large quantity of vitamilange extract which if we're shipping it over on mass in spaceships isn't going to be too bad um, I think Mark is making it in huge quantities. It's just it was a bit awkward to get it over here. And machine learning data is fairly straightforward to make. It's, that's all fairly cheap stuff. So that that's then seems reasonable, especially in things that seem seem va fairly valuable. So anything we want to have large quantities of and, and, and are struggling with. Then maybe we consider the Productivity 5, which is only bioscrubbers, which I think Mark will be making for probably, maybe this is for the Tier 4 of, or the Tier 3 bioscience. I'm, I'm honestly not sure when they're, when they're required. They're not that difficult to make. Granted, we need a lot of them, but they're not that difficult to make, so hopefully that'll be okay. Um, and then Biocatalog bio 1, admittedly, which is... They're, they're, they're kind of expensive, but I think it could be worth it. And then we carry on with with, with number six from there, which there is just more catalog models, and, and then the uh, the dark, dark green bottle. So that's again not too bad. It's a lot of stuff, but if we got it being brought in on mass, we might want to start making them, especially if we, as we're going to then start thinking about Naquium in the in the not too distant future. And Naquium, you want to put in all the productivity modules you can because it's really hard work to make it. Seven again, it's not a crazy amount of stuff. It is crazy amounts of stuff when you consider it's double. It, you require two of each of the two, four, eight, sixteen of all the previous modules as well. But each individual step doesn't look too bad. Um, okay, now it's starting to look a bit, a little bit painful. Uh, but if we can get modules up to this sort of level as well, then we can start thinking about putting them into the uh, science labs as well, that, which would be very worthwhile. And then you get right up to products for two, uh, Prod Mod 9, uh, which is all kinds of crazy stuff, including deep space catalogues, proof. Um, and that is, is, of course, the top tier. You, the, the top, top tier you can get to. Now another thing that would be worth doing would be taking out this um, this beacon here and putting in one of the uh, compact, compact beacons, possibly one of these, because you, you'll notice that this one has 15 module slots with a 50% transmission efficiency, so it can, as it says, it can push through seven and a half modules worth of power of, of power. Well, it calls it power, so we'll call it power. This one uh, takes 10 module slots at 75%. Oh, because this one is still actually only 75%, so it's. If you've got more expensive, if you're using more expensive modules, then maybe it's worth it. But if you're not, then actually you get the same amount of effect out of both of them. That said, at the moment we have one of these, uh, an eight, which is eight module slots, fifty percent. So, it's, so we could get we could get these machines running with almost twice as much speed module effect on them by pulling this up and replacing it with either a wide area beacon or putting a compact beacon in up here. It's kind of it doesn't matter too much which we do. I don't think they're both going to be similarly effective. Uh, they'll they'll both both increase the speed of, of the of the uh, research by, by about the same amount. By exactly the same amount, in fact. It's just one will require. It's just using the uh, the compact one will require slightly fewer modules to get us there. Um, and so, actually, given that, maybe it's worth thinking about some of the slightly better speed modules. Uh, the tier four speed module, for example, is only iridium plate and machine learning data. Now, okay, we don't have a lot of iridium plate at the moment, but fairly soon, Mike is going to have that being shipped through in larger quantities. Then it's only heavy girders and material catalogs, so again, not too bad. We could, we could get some proper speed out of these um, and get our science running a lot quicker. Now, okay, it's finished doing a research them right now, but we could get things running a lot quicker <laughs> in general. 
So that brings me quite neatly onto, onto the research where we finished off energy weapon damage 9, so it's made our lasers a bit more powerful, a bit more effective, uh, in theory without boosting the amount of power they use, so that's just a straight up improvement on them. Um, that was the one that was being researched last time and is now actually finished. And we've also done laser shooting speed 7, which, um, as, as I think I've discussed before, uh, means the laser fires faster, which I assume means each burst takes less time, so it can do the bursts more often. Um, so that will increase the damage, but also increase the power out, power usage. So it's not quite as good as increasing the damage uh, levels, but it does, but it will make the lasers more effective. And given that power isn't really a problem for us anymore, I think I'll take that. I'll just go for a straight up upgrade on there. The only place where it's possibly a slight disadvantage is for the lasers in your personal armor, because because that'll drain the batteries a bit more quickly and there it does kind of sort of matter. It looks like we finished the tank as well. Now technically that was still in progress at the uh, at the beginning of when I recorded the videos, but I've spent enough time recording the videos that it has finished. So yeah, we, we, we will have this finished fairly soon into the next uh, into the next video. Now this seems to take quite a lot of the um, uh, different of, uh, of uh, fairly advanced materials in order to make it. So I'm hoping that that means it's quite a lot more powerful and effective than the um, than the old style tank, which now appears to be looking at the graphics there has been renamed to the heavy armored vehicle for Crastorio 2. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, maybe we'll make one of those. We, we'll see. And we don't do a huge amount of up-close and personal combat. Um, so it might depend on whether it's possible to drive one of these into the pyramids. And I suspect it's not going to be. So I think we probably won't really use these very much. Instead, we'll use the artillery. We'll use the glaive be beam weapons. Um, probably use lots of laser turrets. Carry on using laser turrets. Maybe we'll actually make the laser artillery turrets. Who knows? I don't think we're going to use the tanks very much because I don't think they're going to really fit our playstyle. Still, they sound like they could be. They sound like they could be fun at least. Maybe they'll be good for going out onto uh, newly discovered planets. The final thing to look at then, I guess, is the death counter. So last week was quite a peaceful, uh, a peaceful run. We uh, no, nobody died, so we did we did quite well there. Not not even I died. Not even Mike died. Uh, so the scores haven't changed. I've still pulled just ahead of Mark, but I'm still well behind Mike. So uh, things are, yeah, as I say, things are unchanged. And I think that brings us to the end of the episode. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll uh, come back and join us on Monday for the stream, starting at 7.30pm UK time and going on until we all fall asleep at our desks. Uh, then on Wednesday I'll be doing the uh, the XCOM 2 stream and hopefully going out and uh, poking some aliens in places where they don't want to be poked. Tuesday I've got XCOM videos coming out at the moment and they seem to be coming out reasonably reliably so keep an eye out for those. And then Friday, Saturday I'll be talking about what happened on the, um, on the Factorio stream once again. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.